Thank you for stopping by the VZ channel. This is another expat interview, and today I'm with Darlene. Uh, thank you for being on here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, we'll be talking about um, teaching English in China or Shanghai specifically, right? Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay. Why China? Yeah, like why China? I ask this for everybody. Why China? It's like so random, you know, moving from different parts of the world. By China. China. Like, mm, yeah, this country, a communist country. Mm. Um, well, look, it depends on how, how much detail you want. It can be a short and concise answer, or, mm. or I can ramble for you. Because part ramble, of the reason, <laughs> part of the reasons is you first have to look at the situation in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm from South Africa. It's a traumatized country. Mm -hmm. Our job level has now gone up to 61% unemployed. Mm -hmm. So there is not a lot of prospects. 61%. 61%. Not 6.1%. 61%. When I left, the unemployment rate was 45%. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not a lot of job prospects in South Africa. Not a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. I had a menial job, which I was relatively happy in, but the pay sucked. You look from paycheck to paycheck. Um, like, like most places, actually. Yeah. A hand to mouth type of thing, it got to a point where you go, am I putting gas in my car or am I eating this month? What am I what am I doing? Yeah. Um, so when Anel decided she's coming abroad again, mm -hmm. she looked at a bunch of countries and she said she's looking at China. Mm -hmm. So also we took a look at China, what's the opportunities, what's the expat experience? Mm -hmm. And Did some the, research. the reviews that came back were like really good. Mm -hmm. um, one of so, the top things is probably like the salaries. Mm. One of the highest for ESL, right? Yeah, one of the highest for ESL, and it's a safe country. Mm. Um, big contrast with South Africa, right? Big now. contrast to South Africa. Like when I first got here, we went walking around. Um, I went to Hong Kong. We went walking around at night, and that was like a new experience almost. Mm. That my anxiety levels skyrocketed. I'm outside at night, but I'm not being mugged. Mm -hmm. I'm not being attacked, I'm safe. Yeah. I still sent like a voice note to my sister. I'm like, oh my god, it's 10 o'clock at night and we're walking around. Yeah. And there's people everywhere and everything's open and it's safe. Mm -hmm. It's like even the dark little alleyways are safe. <laughs> yeah, there's not like teenagers hanging around yeah. be causing trouble. Right? Um, yeah. So that was a big draw for me. Um, Did you decide like straight away I'm going to come in and, and stay here for a while or just try it out and then maybe leave later? I came in with the idea of at least two years. Okay. Yeah. Now that you're halfway through, do you think you could have... Yeah, I'm going to stay. Okay. Alright, so a lot of people are asking me, like, what do you need to have before coming and teaching in China? What, what kind of experience do you need? Some people think, like, afraid you need, uh, you know, lots of experience, be an actual teacher or have other certifications. Is that the case? I think it would probably help you if you have your teaching qualification, mm -hmm. but in China's requirements is you need a degree from the university and then a TEFL course, which is basically what I did, is I did my 120 hour TEFL course mm -hmm. and then applied for jobs. Finished. TEFL, what is that exactly? Is that online? Teaching, or? yeah, teaching English foreign language, so mm -hmm. it's a bridging course that they give you um, online to be able to teach. Um, and then when you get to your school, you usually have some training as to more specifics. Uh, of the actual so, company? Yeah, of the actual company. So TFL is more broad line mm -hmm. on what teaching is and the basic requirements. And then at your actual school or academy or training center, you mm -hmm. will do more specific training. Yeah. And you need a degree, right? You need a degree. Yeah. yeah. used to be a little bit simpler mm -hmm. when I first came here. And then literally one year later, they changed it. So. Yeah. You, you still needed a degree, you needed a TEFL certificate and a criminal record. Yeah. And then next year they changed it to um, needing uh, having your degree certified. Yeah. 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 Well, not a criminal record, a criminal clearance. Do I need a criminal record? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Making sure you don't have a criminal, <laughs> criminal record. Yeah. Otherwise, South Africans would do really well here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a requirement for our politicians that you need a criminal record. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you do have something on you, like uh, I don't know, drug possession previous. Would they let people in here or not? No. 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 no China yeah. is incredibly strict. Mm -hmm. um, unless it was like a sealed juvenile record, I don't think you would yeah. stand a chance. 
Yeah, you know, when you're filling in your application, for at least for the UK, you yeah. need to like admit to if you have been cautioned or warnings. Mm -hmm. And I typed in, like, yeah, I, I was caught uh, one time when I was 15 with a little bit of Mary J. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. I didn't put it in there, so I feel I clear. With the attitude of marijuana being legalized in a lot of places, mm -hmm. that one has gone down a lot as being frowned upon. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if it's more serious things like vandalism, burglary, and you know, a lot of crap that teenagers get into, if you yeah. were caught for anything aggressive, yeah. it will definitely be a no. Yeah, I mean, it didn't show up in my final report or anything, so yeah. I was. I was a good boy. You were a juvenile, so mm -hmm. say, a lot of it with juvenile things are, uh, there's a statute of limitations on it. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you're 15 and it never reoccurred like in your early 20s, yeah. then No, in the UK, I mean, this is a different topic, I mean, completely, yeah. but in the UK it's really lax. Like, um, you get two portions which uh, actually expire. So if you if, like, if you don't get caught again for six months again, it's your first portion. Okay. And so then after two portions, you get a warning. Mm. <laughs> so there's a long, long process. You get many chances before it goes you know, further, which okay. probably might end only end up being a penalty anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm from a small time where you actually just look at the cops and explain yourself, and usually it's fine. Yeah. And also, the best weed that you bought in South Africa was from the cops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, we went going off on a tangent there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, back to the TEFL thing, did you feel like that prepared you enough? Like were you nervous about starting teaching? Oh yeah, no definitely because I was brand new to teaching mm -hmm. and I had never actually worked with children before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that scared the crap out of me. Um, so TEFL did sort of prepare you, at least gave you like, the broad strokes background of what to expect with teaching. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure about the little ones because TEFL, I want to say, focuses more on, on older mm. older kids and people, like teenagers and adults yeah. teaching. Um, so yeah, working with, with little kids sort of like went over. Mm. Um, yeah. What, like, was, like, what, your, what was your biggest worry? Swearing in front of the kids. <laughs> Swearing. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, they're Chinese, they probably wouldn't understand, so that's fine. Ah, well, the things now come back to you when you start doing the bigger kids, mm -hmm. and they start repeating things they've heard, you're like, can mm. say that in class? <laughs> mm. um, and now we're actually being filmed, not filmed, but... Uh, recorded, yeah. Reco like, recorded, yeah. or is it just live streaming kind it's of... It's just live know? streaming cameras, and I don't think there's any audio mm -hmm. uh, for the parents. Yeah, that's good. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> No, there are really, there are some moments when the kids make you want to blow up, you know? Oh, well, see, I have a second language, I have mm -hmm. Afrikaans, so if my kids really get to me, then I just switch languages. Okay. So I go off in another language. Okay. Okay. Yeah, same with me, Russian. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, one of my biggest, uh, especially with the older kids, punishment tactics is if you insist on talking to my class, mm -hmm. then we switch seats. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk? Now you're a teacher. And I sit down and I'll be the trouble mm -hmm. Then they're like, oh no, yeah. what am I doing? <laughs> It's fun, isn't it? It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the temple course helps you a little bit, but mm. uh, probably actually being here, right? The training. You learn by doing. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm learning. You're learning mm -hmm. by doing. You get a bit of background. You get a bit of like guidance and yeah. some tips and tricks, and you're like, here you go, yeah. sink or swim. Yeah. And did your company like kind of? push you straight away to the deep end or were there some type of training before you started teaching? Well, okay. I came on the 25th of December 2019. Mm -hmm. I had two weeks at work and then there was COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I sort of missed my initial training. I got thrown into online teaching right at the go mm -hmm. and then got to campus and also I think I taught for about three months before we actually had training. Mm -hmm. So I got my training sort of after the fact. Yeah, we made a training, by the way. Yeah, we made a training. So, yeah, um, yeah I got thrown into the deep end and went, okay, this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What's nice with the learning center is there's courseware mm -hmm. and a curriculum, and if you stick to the guidelines, you can pretty much do it. Yeah. Um, this is the thing with most training centers, you actually don't need to do that much class preparation. Mm. I mean, you should still like know what you're about to do, but... Yeah. The lesson structure, the material is all done all for you. There for you. Yeah. yeah, you've got games and things to play. Mm -hmm. And then I am a big team player, so with my LT, the rhythm of went, hi, you've done this before, I haven't. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look to you to provide us with quite a few of these things. Yeah. 
um, we are a team, so we sort of work together. Mm. And I just, that approach worked really well with me. I get along really well with my local teachers. Yeah, this is a really good point to make. Uh, for some people who may not know, for training centers, you are not alone in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have a local teacher um, and then the foreign teacher, so you can. One can watch for discipline while the other one's teaching mm -hmm. and vice versa, so that's, that's yeah. quite nice. A good tip would be to really, and they really push that tip to you in the training, is make a good relationship with the LT. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they're classroom. not your TA, they're your co-teacher. Yeah. yeah, they do have a lot of stuff to do, mm -hmm. like they have a lot of responsibilities, yeah. way more than foreign teachers. Yeah, also because we don't talk to the parents. Mm -hmm. I think if that foreign teachers actually had to communicate with the parents, then our workload would be more. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably going to start doing that with the new contracts, but yeah. anyway, that's specific to our company. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. Obviously, in China, there's so many different uh, types of things you can do in terms of teaching. There's schools, there's training centers. By the way, training center, we're going to talk about some news coming up about China later. Yeah. They're going to be uh, changing a lot. a lot. But yeah, for the moment, there's training centers, kindergartens, and schools. Yeah. Yeah. So at the moment, what kind of age are you teaching? Well, my age range is from my youngest was two and a half, and my oldest was eleven. Mind blowing, right? When you right. come here, to China, and there's two and a half year olds learning, learning English. Like, what are you doing? Right? <laughs> I'm learning. You're still a baby. Yeah. Strange that my two and a half year old is really bright. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. She actually skipped a level. She moved on. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Um, in terms of language learning, it makes sense, right? The earlier you learn a language, the yeah, better you better want to learn. Yeah, but also it sticks, I think, better. Especially if there's reinforcement. Mm. Um, then it's just when you see those tiny human beings right. in a classroom setting. Right, yeah. and then the shame of adjustment to class, to being away from home and everything, that can be quite tough. Yeah. So, do you like this age? <sighs> it's difficult. Um, once they've settled in, I rather like them. Getting them settled in, I'm not that fond of getting there. Mm -hmm. um, with the disruptive behavior and the crying and the tantrums. Um, but once they've realized that this is a safe, calm environment mm -hmm. and um, you can have fun here, then yeah, they're quite, they're quite nice to work with because yeah. once they get something, their whole face lights up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After a while, they get used to it, right? Yeah. And when you come in and they're like, hello, oh, teacher darling, yes. do you make them call you, do you make them darling? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And for some reason, quite a few people call me Linda. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> whatever, whatever works. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Um, yeah, like being pile drive by a bunch of kids. Like you tackle and just cover in children, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and with training centers, it's not just one class that's your class, it's like a whole bunch of. Yeah, like I had. 19 classes at a stage okay. and worked out it's about 250 students. Um, yeah. It's a lot of names to remember. That was my next one. How are you with the names? <laughs> um, if you take me out of my classroom setting, unless they stood out for some reason, I you know could like name one or two in a class. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of class, not so much. But if I walk into class, it's like, okay, I know mm -hmm. these kids. Also helps that your LT writes, usually writes the names in the city. In the city, city. Order, yeah, yeah, yes. that's a good tip. So that if you do forget someone's name, you can go, with like, okay, number you're, you're seven number is Jojo. <laughs> Hi, Jojo. Yeah. Um, oh, their names are so funky, right? Right? Yeah, this is a, what's the, like, I had kids called seven. I have a milk. Milk? milk. Yeah. Milk. This is one of the most entertaining parts about teaching English in China. You yeah. get, like, crazy English names. Right, tutu. Tutu. Two. 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 Yeah, two. not 22. Two, two and two. How does that work? T W O? Wow. Two two. Okay. Two two. Yeah. One yeah. two is not enough. No. No. <laughs> no. So yeah, yeah, you get some crazy names. Um, and they choose their own names, which is mm. which is quite interesting. I had to name a kid the other day. Me too. And yeah. I found that like an it's a big responsibility to give someone a name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, one little girl let me she she used to be called I think Agnes or something. Mm. Which is like a really old fashioned random name. Like your grand great grandparents, right? Yeah. And then she's like, teacher, I want to change my name. I said, okay, what's your name going to be? She said, I don't know. What do you think? And I'm just like, blue? No. Uh, flower? Mm. Rose? Yes, I like rose. Okay, you're rose. Fantastic. <laughs> I also had a new kid a while back and he didn't have an English name. Mm -hmm. So we also looked at him like, what do you want to be called? And he's like, he doesn't know. So we sort of go, David? James? 
Jack. <laughs> Kevin? He's like, I like Kevin. I'm like, okay, hi, Kevin. Um, <laughs> yeah. You just named the kid. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I get that kind of a bonding thing, right? Right. Gets a bond with them. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, kids this age is a mixed bag. Yeah. Well, I'm moving to a kindergarten now, so I'm starting with them on three to four year olds. Three to four. That's uh, K1 or K2. K1. Uh -huh. K1. Yes. So now you're just gonna have one class. I'm gonna have one class, homeroom. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a big adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, lots of work, so I'm sort of looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to bonding with my kids. Yeah, if you're into that, you're going to enjoy kindergarten a lot more. Yeah. I did one year of kindergarten as well. Okay. Um, and then I went back to LE. No, I just definitely enjoyed um, having just one class. Yeah. So you get to know your kids, the ins and outs of them. Because that's sort of, like, I enjoy my kids in my classes so much. Mm -hmm. And then I get them for an hour a week, an hour and a half a week. Yeah. And you don't really get to know them. And I sort of miss that. I sort of looked at them and I said, I want to know you better. I want to be able to find out how you learn to make it easier for you. And you yeah. can't do that in an hour and a half. Yeah, you're going to watch them grow and not... Because mm. with training set, you just see them once a week, mm. right? Yeah, you've got to watch them grow every day. Yeah. The part that I didn't personally like is uh, you're much more involved with the actual classroom uh, arrangement, decorations mm. and stuff like that, which is good for creative people, but for me, I'm like, Okay, all right, it's Christmas now. I need to put up Christmas decorations. Yeah. See, I'm again looking forward to that. I have an entire Pinterest board. Wow. I'm meeting my principal next week to hear what may I do to my cats. Yeah, so you're going to love it. All right, I'm yeah, going dinosaur theme. Anyway. And you have total freedom with how you arrange the classroom. It's like, it's your classroom now. So yeah. yeah. You're going to enjoy yeah. that. Part. I think I'm going to that's, that's the part I'm looking forward to, is to be creative mm -hmm. with my kids. Because now with the training center environment, you don't have the time mm -hmm. to teach your kids through creativity. Because art takes time and it's messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you get to do it with them, like yes. arts and crafts. Yes. Yeah, no, with training centers, it's just like ba, 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 ba. 45 minutes of A, next lesson B, four words, one sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very quick. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what do you think is the so far with the first job that you had the most difficult part? Like we mentioned behavior a little bit. Any other difficult parts of teaching? Well, okay, by comparison, Chinese kids are so better disciplined than South African kids. Um, so much less yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll have like, I mean, the naughty kids in my class are naughty because they don't listen and they talk, yeah, don't pay attention and they talk. Mm -hmm. That was like the worst behavior. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's getting them to pay attention and finding out why they have to pay attention. Uh, trying to explain to them that because they're talking, their mate next to them isn't listening either, and then you both fail your test. Yeah. You're not retaining your information. Um, so yeah, behavioral issues, issues here and there were um, difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. What I found the toughest to deal with is you get kids with learning disabilities who come in, mm -hmm. and that's not a very recognized thing in China. Not yet, no. And the parents um, don't want to admit it, right? The parents don't want to admit it, and getting them to understand that their kid's a special need, mm -hmm. that they have to be more patient, that he's not going to be at the top of the class. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Um, and I mean, the LTs recognize it as well. Uh, you have to be, you know, calmer with this kid. I have one kid that was either borderline or full autistic, who does really well with routine structure. Mm -hmm. So once he got into his routine of his class, oh, this is how my class is structured, he settled in fine. You actually got him to speak. Yeah. And then come test time, suddenly it's something different, and he freaks out. Wow. Yeah. To try and explain that to his parents, going, this is normal for him, mm -hmm. it's okay, but we will have to approach this differently. Yeah, maybe try to do the test at home or something. Yeah, we'll go, can you sit in the class with me, see mm -hmm. if you can keep him calm, and we do a test with him. So yeah, having, having to approach learning difficulties mm -hmm. and um, getting those students settled into a classroom environment, is, is quite tough, especially if your class is quite advanced. If you have a lot of good kids in your own class, and you mm. have your oh, one I love those struggling. classes, to be honest. Right, they're yeah, fantastic. They're barely, they're barely teaching. Yeah, they like, teaching what's themselves. this? All right, done, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, I've got one or two classes like that, where there's like five or six that are really good, and they push each other, yeah. and by that, drag everyone else with them. <laughs> because the yeah, slow yeah, ones yeah. don't have time to go, what? Let's be disruptive. No. They are all competing yeah. to be on the same level, and it's fantastic. But do you know what, what I really enjoy is sometimes uh, 
you know, when a kid misses a class, they have to do makeup. Mm. And if that kid is from an all disruptive class, and then he makes up in a smart class, which are all way behaved, well behaved, and he's like, oh my god, is my class supposed to be like this? And then he kind of he becomes better because he's yeah. surrounded now by good kids. Oh yeah, if you focus a little bit, wow, look at this. Yeah, we're actually learning stuff here. Yeah. 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 But one thing I do want to mention about behavior is like when I first came here, I thought the expectation for the teacher is to uh, be like a magician. Like I thought the parents expected me to be a magician and like just because I'm a teacher I'm supposed to manage them well. So snap your fingers and they're all quiet. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the case and uh, the more I spend time here at my job, the more I realize the parents are kind of okay with it if they not talk because they're with them at home. Kids also know, the parents know whose kids are naughty. Exactly. They right? know. And uh, sometimes the parents are friends with each other, so yeah. it's like, if you're having a family class, don't be too nervous that one kid is just going to be a total mess, because the parents know. Right? Yeah, the parents know. Well, I have one kid that is okay, one, one of my classes, he's really like talkative, he doesn't like paying attention, mm -hmm. he becomes quite disruptive. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't talk to anybody, he sits and makes random noises, loudly. Yeah. Um, and so at one stage his mom approached me and she goes, she can see on the camera that I'm having some difficulty with him. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how you talk to him, what do you say to him, whether you're yelling or trying to be quiet or trying to be reasonable, nothing works. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a very creative kid. Mm -hmm. So he ended up taking art lessons. Mm -hmm. So now if he's disruptive in my class, I've noticed that if I give him something to draw, I'm like, okay, fine, we're doing vegetables today. Yeah. Draw me some vegetables, creative vegetables. And as long as he's drawing, he's listening. Mm -hmm. So if I can keep his hands busy and him focused, it yeah. works fantastic with him. Yeah, I mean, it is hard for a kid to just sit on a chair mm. for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a very busy kid. Like, his brain's always busy. So like I said, if you can give him something to focus on, he can listen. Mm. Uh, so that worked well for him. But you have to get to know your kids to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, you need to spend time there. Yeah. It's an easy job. <laughs> uh, a lot of people come in and it's like, yeah, this, hey, this is going to be pushy, it's going to be easy. Yeah, is this an easy job? Because uh, some people just want to come here for having fun, you know, which is yeah. understandable, like a gap year kind of thing. Yeah. They're young, they may be doing university still, well, no, they can't do university still. They just graduated, yeah. right, and they just want to travel around the world and have an easy time. Is yeah. that a good uh, fit for them, do you think? I've seen with one or two of my colleagues that had that attitude, no, no, because you're not here to teach your kids, you don't care if they do well or not, and that shows in your job performance, mm -hmm. um, that if you show up hungover and you sort of go through your lesson plan, no, mm -hmm. um, you actually do have to, I don't know, I don't know, like it snaps in your brain that you're teaching, you mm -hmm. care about your kids, like yeah. we're talking now. You, you try and help them and so forth, and if you're just here for a gap year going, ah, easy money, you don't. Mm -hmm. And that shows in your job performance. And unfortunately, well, probably fortunately, um, job performance is a, is a big thing here. You're constantly being evaluated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get, uh, what's it called, people come in and uh, assess your, yeah, what's something called? Uh, it has a name. It has a name, I forgot. Sometimes words just come out of my brain. A professional assessment or observation. Observation, yeah, yeah. you get observed quite often. Yeah, well, also yeah. now with the cameras in the class, the parents mm -hmm. stand and watch your class. So fine, there's no audio on it, but they can still see how the class is going. Mm -hmm. And then their kid comes out and they ask, and you know, they Yeah, if you're just sitting home. in like this the whole yeah. time, that's yeah. not going to look good. Right? Or standing in the corner and having the LTD, uh, all the disciplining and things like that, it yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. No, and trust me, you don't want to, like, in England we have a Friday night culture. What you drink. Mm. Yeah. Don't if you're working in a training center, don't mm. do a Friday, Friday night, night because no. in a Saturday morning you're gonna have a bunch of loud kids from nine AM and that's not gonna do right. that's not also gonna I mean your weekends are when your schedule's packed. Mm -hmm. During the week you have two classes. Weekends you have up to ten. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, showing up to work hungover on a Saturday morning is gonna be yeah. Hell. yeah. So I mean if you take your job uh, as a job you're gonna have a good time anyway in China, right? Yeah. Which we'll get to in a second living in China, but yeah, it is a job. It is a job. It's yeah. a, it's, a, it requires a lot of investment on your part. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like retail or other jobs where you can show up and sort of 
not have to focus, you have your times where you can just like space out and do the autopilot, mm -hmm. not so much. No, 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 there's no space in that because teaching is kind of a performance, right? Yeah. Especially for the young ones, it's not a lecture. You're, there are lecturer jobs, but if you're coming to teach kids, yeah, yeah. you have to like do presentation kind of stuff. You have yeah. to be a clown. Which, you know. if to perform, you have to like elicit, you have to yeah, uh, be fully involved and engaged with your kids, and they can tell when you're not. Um, then they not. Yeah, kids are crazy smart, actually. Right? Yeah. Very, very perceptive perceptive creatures. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I can tell you probably like your job. Uh, most For the most part, right, you're just going to stay here and you're going to go to kindergarten. What's been your best experience so far teaching English in China? I had one kid um, who struggled so much. Um, it was so hard to teach him. It was almost like a lost school. You sort of look at him and go, nothing, nothing penetrates. It's like just bounces off his head. Mm -hmm. And now during my last like two, three months, it's like something in his head went snap. Mm -hmm. And how fast this kid caught up. Sweetest, sweetest little boy. His mom dresses him like a mini accountant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And to see this kid like blossom, mm -hmm. like literally like grow and you know, like if he comprehends something, he actually gets this little smile on his face, going, "I get it." Yeah. And he's caught up with the rest of his class so much. Wow. And like in my last lesson with him, he actually gave me a little dinosaur oh. as a bye bye. That was like such a good moment. But yeah, to see that kid, that kid that you struggle with and you've been trying things with him, mm -hmm. and to see suddenly that you know, like there's comprehension and mm -hmm. he wants to and he's growing. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that just is total evidence that we're, we're all learning completely different paces. Yeah, and it is like a light switch for some yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, it's like with my kid now. You know, he was crawling, 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 and it's not a gradual. Like one day, he just stands up and start walking. You know, the muscle coordination. They were like, oh, okay, yeah. I can do this. I know yeah. it's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah, also to learn that yeah, kids learn at different rates. Don't push the ones that are slower. Mm -hmm. Like. Let them be. Like, find question and inquire and find out. Yeah. But like, to put undue pressure on them. Yeah. Is like a no no. Yeah. Don't turn into a dictator in a yeah. classroom. Yeah. Also to tell the parents going like, mm -hmm. yeah, your kid's not doing well now. Let him be. Yeah. Keep keep doing your homework. Keep reviewing with him. He learns at a different pace mm -hmm. and it's fine. Yeah. He doesn't have to compete with everybody. Yeah, um, they already have enough of that kind of um, pressure system right. in their own schools, like that's yeah. the Chinese system, right? I can have the opposite of that. I have one girl that is incredibly sweet, very, very smart. Her written tests are through the roof, she always gets 100%. Mm -hmm. But her speaking is terrible because she's so shy, mm -hmm. like, like, phobic shy. Yeah. And I've actually gotten her to speak in her class now. Talk to her and go, yeah. you don't have to be good at this, but you have. Yeah, at least whisper to my ear. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. you don't have to talk to me, talk to me, but you have to talk. Because that's half the point. If you don't talk, you're only doing half your class. Mm -hmm. So you are you're getting 100% in your test, but you're getting 0% in your speaking, which means you've got 50%. Yeah. Because she's a achiever, so she's like, oh, I've got half. <laughs> so it is actually quite rewarding, right? If you get close to this, uh, yeah. one of the biggest rewards of this job is to see them progress. To see them yeah. progress. I, yes. I never thought I would ever be a teacher when I was younger. Same. And like, I didn't expect I would actually care, but you, you do start because they're like so cute, right? right? When they're doing well, you're happy. There's no pretense, there's no facade with kids. Mm. What you see is what they're you totally get. Totally honest, yeah. Yeah, totally open. Um, and yeah, I also never thought I'd work with kids. Like, my sisters are still like, you're working with kids? You. And you like it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I, I I was quite surprised at how much I like teaching, which is mm -hmm. why I'm trying kindergarten I'm to see if I have my kids full time, mm -hmm. um, if I can actually do this for the rest of my life. Yeah, that would be nice. Do you ever want to try going uh, to older to I would kids? Like to actually go to older kids, teenagers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I have probably got the misconception that kindergarten is easier, mm -hmm. um, but um, I think it's like also like being thrown into the deep end. Mm -hmm. um, with kindergarten because you get to deal with them on a tabula rasa, like a blank slate mm -hmm. level, 
Um, and if you can curb their behavior and learn how to address things at this age, dealing yeah. with older kids can be easier because you've got like a fundamental background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, older kids' behavior issues is a totally different thing. Yeah. Uh, they, they are like, I taught in the secondary school and their biggest problem is complete um, unwillingness to do anything unless it's, I don't know, unless it's whatever, but yeah. they're just so tired from the regular classes. When they see a foreign teacher come in, they're just like, oh, it's time to relax. Right. <laughs> that's my biggest problem when I was teaching the older ones. Yeah, with, um, oh, well, I see, because that's why China changed the regulations. Mm -hmm. is these kids have too much pressure on them. Mm. Because I've looked at them working weekends and so forth, and looking at these kids going, when do they have time to be kids? Mm. When do they have time to go, I'm going to watch cartoons today, mm. and those are my plans for today. I might go play outside later. That type of being a kid. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually, actually think it's a, in the long run, a good thing for them to be able no, to No, I think totally break. agree with this new policy. The new policy we're talking about, it, by the way, is that uh, I think uh, eventually it's going to totally ban training institutions. For now, it's only on the weekends, which is the busiest time for training institutions, which yeah. is like going to hit the businesses really hard, yeah. and uh, many people will lose their jobs. But yeah, I totally agree with this new policy. Like. There's too much pressure on, on the kids in China in general because they, 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 their parents want them to go, do good. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you know you want the best for your child, mm -hmm. so you try and push them, but this is too much. Um, yeah. To have full-time school where in school is... Um, they have their full-time school schedule and then they have full-time learning on a weekend as well. Mm -hmm. It's insane, and that's apart from the extracurriculars like art or piano lessons or taekwondo and yeah. everything else that they do. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, and on the weekdays, they they come after school. So, uh, mm. like, our work finishes at 8 on yeah. Monday to Friday, and you've got, like, these three, four-year-olds yeah, finishing their class at 8, which is probably like should be their bedtime already. It should be their bedtime. Yeah. Well, it was one thing when I also like art care, you're like walking around at 10 o'clock at night and you see still see kids running around, and I'm like, shouldn't he be at home in bed? <laughs> like, it's just past bedtime. Yeah. But our culture, like, especially like still from grade school down, like mm -hmm. 8 o'clock's bedtime. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you get really good ones though, very yeah. active. I make, uh, recently I make the parents totally involved in every single activity. Like, we're gonna sing a song, you guys sing too. And the uh, kids have fun with that too. Like, they see their parents singing the song and like dancing. Yeah. Right. Right, we also have, like, I had my bigger students do a baby song a while back. And the parents sort of look at me going, like, I've seen this, this before when they were still like in K level. Yeah. They did the song and they you know, danced to it and so forth. And now we did the same song and the song repeated the why. I'm like, listen. When they were babies, they just did the movements because yeah. we taught them the movements. Now they're singing the song. Yeah. The whole song. And they know what it means. Mm. They're like, ah. I'm like, yeah. There's growth. This is why I want to show you the difference. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice tip, actually. Yeah. 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 Because I, I, I always do the opposite, try to do something different every time. Because I'm like, okay, last time we sang this song, I we want to do something different. But no, this is actually a good way to actually show them the, what's going on. Right, to how much they've grown. Yeah. Like, uh, also, I look at my kids and what do they want to do? And they wanted to do bingo. And I'm like, what have you been doing bingo since I've had you in K2? Like, okay, fine, you can do bingo, but you're singing the song. Like, okay. Actually, kids also enjoy when they're getting better at something too. Right? Yeah. Right, because I like put the I put the the sound down so you could actually hear them singing. Mm. And I'm like, oh my god, yes, my kid knows the song. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so that was quite nice. Like, yeah, you grow a lot with with kids, and like I said, because kids are so open, you can't be closed off. You have to be open as well. So they literally draw you out of yourself. Because I am quite an introvert. Mm. Um, yeah. Same. So to be thrown into the role of performer mm -hmm. is, is an adjustment. Um, but yeah, like in class I'm fine. Struggle with the parent classes, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about, uh, we're going to talk in a, in a second about 
actually been in China and go away from the topic of teaching, but just stay on uh, the job for a second. Uh, can you tell people some differences between the work environments in South Africa and China? So, like, what what is it like working with Chinese colleagues and Chinese bosses? I think there's a, a big difference in discipline. Uh, China is so much more disciplined than South Africa. The South Africa has a, a strong work ethic. So the way we were raised is you do your job and you do your job well and you try to do it to the best of your ability. You don't slack. You don't know, you ask, you learn. And that's actually encouraged here as well. They do sort of look at you because I ask out openly instead of, you know, doing the saving face way. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, China has a, has a big work culture. These guys work hard. Yeah. Um, so... That was quite an adjustment because I'm from Africa. Because I'm a little bit more laid back. Um, and so here yeah, it's go, 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 focus, do your job. Yeah. Um, oh, the so LTs work hard. The LTs do work really hard. And I see it appreciated if you ask, what can I do? What can I help you with? And they're like, oh, okay. Oh, you're nice. I'm more lazy. I'm like, <laughs> get my job, get out. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, like how we that finally math make teaching materials and things like that, and that's also a bonding thing with your teachers. Mm. Um, like little classroom videos and all those things. Do you find it easy? I don't know. Maybe your office environment is different, but uh, well, actually, it depends on the campus or the job. Like when I first got to China and my first campus, uh, we were all like really young, and the LTs were really young, and like everyone's excited to talk to each other, learn from each other, and go hang out. And then it's like every single work I've been to after that in China, kind of an apartheid in the office. Like the Chinese really stick to themselves, and you actually have to, to you know, make, make effort, effort, make yeah. an effort to mix in with them. Because like all the foreigners now sit separately, the Chinese sit separately, and there's very little. When I got to my office, it was like that. Granted, when I got there, there were four other foreign teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so they sat on one. They had their entire own room. And the LTs had their own room, so it wasn't even a just separated space. Mm -hmm. And we seldom mingled. And also, they didn't help each other. It was like this like complete gap, segregation type thing. Yeah. The LT did their thing, the FT did their thing, and they didn't mingle. Yeah. So, even though they are friendly, right? Right. So mm -hmm. I sort of looked at my LT going, but you're my co teacher. Mm -hmm. You're not my TA, you're not my assistant, you're not beneath me, you are my co teacher. If anything else, you're the main one in the class because you communicate with the parents. I'm the add-on. Mm -hmm. So I sort of started asking, uh, okay, what can I do for class? So like I said, I'm new, I was thrown into the deep end, I don't know anything, I have to ask you a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So you're helping me, what can I do to help you? And that opened so many doors. Mm -hmm. um, I started actually befriending my LTs. Um, is it because I'm older? Like, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I was in my 20s, I was in my 30s, and I was like, mm. So, yeah, um, providing help and being willing to learn and asking questions, that to me helped a lot with my, with my Chinese culture mm -hmm. and making friends at work. Yeah. Um, like I said, we ended up being creative. Um, I'm a foodie, so they sort of know this and kind of order things and go, ooh, try this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, with the food thing and culture, you want to make friends, food. China yeah. food. Invite them for dinner. Do you ever hang out like with the LTs? Not as much as we would like to, but yeah, I've done it once or twice. Mm -hmm. like, I'll go out for dinner or do a hot pot or go, you know, they'll go show me one of their favorite restaurants and you know, okay. have some. As a group, food. right? Or uh, once or twice individually and then sometimes as a group, yeah. Have you ever done KTV in China yet? Yeah. Is it something you like or? <laughs> it took me a while to defrost in the beginning. I was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, your voice is super loud in those. Right? There's okay. a ton of reverb on there right, too. Right, but that's also one of those where you actually have to drink. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> so KTV is a lot of fun if you drink. Yeah, so yeah, I had a few drinks in me and then after a while we ended up being like, having quite a, quite a karaoke session. Yeah, it was quite nice. Like, if you're with people, that's like one of my favorite pastimes in China. Right. KTV, you know, karaoke is very different from my idea of karaoke before coming. Because my idea before is just like, you're at home with a TV screen. Yeah, a TV screen and you have... And you've got like shitty little microphones. 
Yeah. No, here it's a whole experience. Right, you, go you, have to still, like, you actually have to go show people. Before you leave Shanghai, you have to be able to show them what a KGB setup is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to do it. Thank you for the idea. No, yeah. it is a really cool experience. Like, um, you know, they do up the rooms, it's like really VIP. Yeah. You've got the nice couches, you've got the dark room, you've got the disco ball, you've got the microphones. Oh, no, it's like yeah. a whole setup, a whole vibe that you have. Yeah. yeah, and it's a special occasion. Yeah. It can be a bit expensive, but if you go as a group, it's cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, don't be afraid to let loose because then you, as soon as you open the door, you hear all those drunk Chinese yeah. people <laughs> singing terribly. So yeah. you can just go ahead and sing terribly and, too. Like, well, that's one of the best things is you don't have to be good at it. Yeah. Just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It is really good. Yeah, okay, TV was fun. would like to go do that again. Uh, so yeah, that kind of leads me next to uh, generally being in China now, because you know there's many places around the world you can teach English, yeah. and probably uh, China is one of the most different places. You can, I mean, Asia in general, right? Yeah, um, so, yeah, because of the language language barrier and uh, the big cultural difference from east to west, mm -hmm. it is it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So yeah, coming to to the east is is an experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but Shanghai, I find, and also speaking to people who have been in other places, Shanghai is one of the best places to teach English in China. Why is that? Um, it has, well, first, a very large population, a very large changeable population. Did you know that Shanghai is one of the largest population fluxes in China? Oh, right. People coming in and going. Because of the migrants, right? Yeah, the migrants. And, yeah. Shanghai is actually like... And like with the universities and so forth, with kids coming in and kids going out, mm. um, it's got a very large fluctuating population. And also it has one of the largest expat populations. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like one percent of, of Shanghai population is expats. Which doesn't sound like a lot, mm -hmm. but one percent of 24 million is 240,000? That is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Don't, don't trust my math. Please don't trust my math. No, I mean, <laughs> if, if you're like in this area, in Prusi, like in the center, you go to gym. This is why most people want to live in Prusi, because like when you go outside in the streets, you see a lot of foreigners, yeah. which for me is uh, still not a lot, because I come from London, yeah. and it's just everybody's from all over the place, but yeah. for China, it is a lot. Right? Yeah, you actually like see more than one other foreign person a day. It's like, oh my god, there's other people! <laughs> No, if you're in smaller towns, you actually turn a little bit Chinese, and you see a foreigner, and you also like, oh, foreigner. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, here it's normal. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more normal. And I say, like, with my working hours that I had, I did not socialize a lot. So I have not seen a lot of Shanghai. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still still exploring like a newbie. Because like I said, I got carried COVID. So I worked yeah. my first six months under lockdown. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I remember that when we, when we met in training and I was like, all these new people come into China during COVID, which is such a different experience to when it was open. Right. Now, thankfully, it has opened right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's totally normal, like, so, except the masks on the metro, it's like normal. Yeah, metro and DD, that's where you have to wear your mask and everything else is it's pretty normal. Yeah, everything's so, open for a while. Well, I've done Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Disneyland, when, we, when our restrictions lifted and Disneyland opened, I think we were one of the first people there. Mm -hmm. We're outside! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, if you come here now, uh, if you are lucky enough to get to China, I don't know about the rules. Like yeah. South Africa is South Africa, on a blacklist, right? Yeah, no, but the cases are still too high. Yeah. They are accepting on some other countries. If you get to come here, you can actually you know, experience normal life in 2021. Right, yeah, yeah you can actually go but, places, see things, go, yeah, go out, go experience drinks and eats and treats. And like that yeah yeah yeah, Cinema, whatever. yeah. yeah. so like I mean one of my also one of my first proper experiences in China was tattoo mm -hmm. found a nice tattoo artist oh really tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow that is beautiful yeah. is that from a Chinese tattoo artist Chinese tattoo artist he actually won Chinese tattoo you won tattoo color of the year for Shanghai I've done one recently and it's nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you right. this is my first tattoo ever is this your first one no it is um, it is a gateway, the first one, right? Yeah. As soon as what I got this one done, I'm like, I need more. Yeah. Right. And once you pop, you don't stop. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, ink is an addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I've my next three can. Cause, really? <laughs> yeah. No, because like when you get the first one, it's like, this is nothing. I'm so naked, I need more. Cool, right? Yeah. I would say tattoos are like commemorating your life on your body. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so, I wanted the memory from Shanghai and like these three little birds as well. I've always wanted my, my Chinese dragon. Mm -hmm. So in Japanese style, I've got my Chinese dragon on my leg. We might get a close up of that later yeah. as a yeah. B-roll, but that, that, that looks really cool. <laughs> um, How much was that, by the way? About 5,000 baht, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Ch Shanghai has a lot to offer, there's a lot to see. Um, like I say, there's so many restaurants, like being a foodie, I like, like mm -hmm. going to different places. Oh, yeah. um, I haven't even scratched the surface of Shanghai. Um, found a fantastic pancake house. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't think about you know Shanghai pancakes. Yeah. There's so many hidden streets, you know, and like uh, even you go to Nanjing Road, which everybody goes to, right? Mm. But then have you turned into the little side streets, right? Yeah, we've tried yeah. that well like once or twice, and you go explore. We actually try and find the little side streets, yeah. little shops, the residential little areas, basement things, tiny little streets, right, where yeah. people live. And it's like, wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, you see so much. Yeah, and um, they, there's businesses in those streets as well. Not just a bit. like there's so many places. You, yeah, you could spend years and years here. I, I really regret not exploring earlier because this YouTube thing I've, I've mentioned in my other videos. Since I started my YouTube channel in December, I've explored more in six months than in five years here. Right. It pushes me to to go to places. Yeah, sure. Like people. you were at the doctor stage. Some of the photos that I saw you based on your WeChat. Yeah. Um, with the containers and the ships and so yeah, 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 and yeah. I mean, I can, I want to go see that. That's yeah. like an area I would like to go explore. Yeah, that's a fun trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to take a bus and then a boat. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I recommend that one. Well, we live on the coast and I haven't actually seen the ocean. Mm -hmm. So that's also on my to-do list. It's just mm -hmm. to take a train and a bus and probably a DD to the actual beach in Shanghai. Like it's not a pretty it's not ocean pretty. next yeah. to Shanghai, but... <laughs> I just, just want to say, I live on a coastal city, I've seen the sea. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a fake kind of beach in Jinshan, mm -hmm. where they have like a small chunk of water which is actually blue. Yeah. The rest of it is totally brown though, mm -hmm. which I guess is understandable because it's the largest shipping port in... Uh, and it's on a river mouth, so you have a lot of slippery things washing out. Yeah, it's a very dirty, busy. Uh, dirty, busy, busy water here, unfortunately. If you want to see Prince. nice beaches, go to Shenzhen, stuff like that, or I heard Dalian, um, no, what's it called, Qingdao has very beautiful blue water, Fantastic. or Hainan, the island, mm. yeah, but yeah, just to say you were here, we'll go there, yeah. Right, just to say that I've seen it, yeah. I'm just going to be able to go, this is Shanghai, this is the ocean. <laughs> yeah. No, it is actually uh, mind-blowing as well to see the, the, the port, yeah, yeah. yeah. The port so the port. many containers. Well, like, okay, fine, like with, with job interviews and things, um, and also I, with, our, with, with the training center, I had to work at some different campuses. Mm -hmm. So if you travel to Baoshan on Line 3, uh, you actually see part of the port mm -hmm. um, containers, and the shipping, and so on. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was buildings and skyscrapers. Um, no, no, those were containers okay. standing in stacks. Stacks, yeah. Three, four stories high. Yeah. Um, it was an experience. Actually, just walking along the river. It's really cool for me. I love the river in Shanghai, the mm. Huangpu River, mm. because there's just so many ships on it all the time. Always busy with something. Yeah, not the tourist ones. There's tourist ones as well. They're like the little ferries, oh, but I'm, I'm talking about the barges, yeah, yeah. The, the industrial ones. It's non-stop. Never ending. Yeah. Never ending. Yeah. One thing I never get tired of is the night skyline in Shanghai with all the yeah. lights. Ah, you could see that a thousand times and still be impressed. Right. Yeah. Right. Every time I like, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. I live here. It's so pretty. <laughs> Have you walked along the band on the Pudong side before? No. You I need have. to do that. I yeah. I have not explored enough yet. So I'm hoping now that I've changed jobs that I actually have weekends or if I have more time yeah. to actually Yeah, I really recommend it. And I really recommend uh, cycling along the band on the Pudong side. There's like a really long stretch that you can like few kilometers. Yeah. And just to see. I, I, we went in a walk, but also we still, they just started lifting quarantine. Mm -hmm. So a lot of places were still closed, but you could go outside. Mm -hmm. So we went to like five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we got dropped off on the Monday and we walked from one end to the other end. Yeah. Um, up until Nanjing. Um, and just had a stroll. That was Nanjing City. Uh, Nanjing's uh, no, street. <laughs> 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 you walk to Nanjing? No, no, no. That'll take that like a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we walked all the way up and then we went to Nanjing. And it was still weird because he didn't see people. Mm. 
think it was still like the flyer, it's like mm -hmm. empty city. Yeah, empty um, city, but um, yeah, that's a good time to see some people doing Tai Chi in the morning. Yeah. And if you want to see like the classic Chinese life, they yeah. usually do it in the mornings. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite it's quite nice. Um, even where I was working um, at the mall, you go to school on weekends. You're early, and you find all the uh, people standing on the freaking um, sidewalks mm -hmm. doing their tai chi. Yeah. One guy that was really good. He always had a vase on his head with flowers on it. Mm -hmm. and he would do all these little things with his head. Wow. Um, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, definitely a lot to see outside of work time. Mm -hmm. I mean, work does keep you busy, but. Uh, how about like salary wise? Is salary, so you've got this tattoo which is five thousand. Yeah. Is that something you would be able to do back home? Oh hell no. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I had to save a few months to actually get my tattoo, but salary wise, China pays well. Um, you can you can live really well in China, um, and quite a lot of the things are cheap. Um, yeah. Salary to you know living. I'm, I've made a video about this already, but yeah, I mean, you can confirm, right? Yeah. Salary to live in... Uh, yeah. yeah, if you don't have to spend your money, you can go a long way with your money mm -hmm. um, in Shanghai. Uh, some some things can be very expensive. Um, Western food can be very expensive yeah. if you go to certain restaurants and stuff. Um, but overall, if you if you shop local and you stay local, it can be go really far. You get a lot of bank for your buck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you do everything local, because like um, most Chinese, their average salary is way lower than ours, but they still can save, right? Right. So how is that possible? It's because they eat, you know, street food or you know, Chinese food is generally quite a lot cheaper than going to McDonald's or stuff. Yeah. We actually wait for stuff. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. 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 What I did find surprising is I still like to actually see how many there actually are. How many Starbucks there are? Insane, yeah. Like every street corner has a Starbucks. Yeah, they love um, coffee there. Yeah. Also, Shanghai is one of the only cities in China that actually has a coffee culture. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. A lot of the other, other cities have a big coffee culture. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would expect it to be more tea. Mm -hmm. But yeah. oh. you, you, you do see the older people having like lots of uh, like glass bottles with it. Yeah, so the older people in Shanghai are the ones drinking tea. Tea, yeah. Um, most days coffee. Yeah. Well, so like one of my first experiences uh, when we went out, we went to Tin Punk. Oh, it's a beautiful little but expensive souvenir yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, we're still like just post COVID, so there were like 20 people there. <laughs> you can say we got so many bargains because everyone's been closed mm -hmm. for so long, so they need to make an income. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we hit it at the right time. Um, but then uh, there was a tea shop there um, with all these different bowls and pots and containers with like petals and things yeah. um, and they made me a flu tea until they get more of that because mm -hmm. yeah your tea can actually treat you for, you know, for ailments and things mm -hmm. so if you can explain what's wrong with you they can give you something for it so yeah tea is a big thing in China yeah that's um, such a big variety yeah 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 and some of it can be quite costly actually I spent about 605 tea um, Very believable, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, every time we go back home, I will bring some tea for my mom and my stepdad. And um, yeah, and also my wife's dad also gave them some tea one time. And uh, so we're coming, coming back soon. My mom sent a picture of the tea she wants to try again, she wants us to bring back. And it's not the tea we bought, it's the tea that her dad bought. Okay, you and can so find it. we're asking him for some tea and he's like, okay, no problem. How much is that, by the way? 1,000 RMB for one box, box of, of tea. tea. And we're like, oh, no wonder she wants that one. I mean, she didn't know the price, but yeah. she could clearly taste the difference. Yeah. Yeah, because the one we've got there is like 70 RMB. Well, we have about 12 different kinds of tea in our cupboard now. Mm -hmm. um, from, you know, just from China. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, from like local, like normal green teas and jasmine teas to the more exotic blades. Yeah. Um, went to uh, the Yian Gardens mm -hmm. and bought some tea there. They have these berry blades, mm -hmm. which is fantastic in summer. Yeah. yeah. No tea bags yet. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, that's no, a no big tea bags. No. That's gonna go. That's gonna be tough to go back to tea bags in England. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you see the loose leaf tea. What's nice with this berry blade is you can eat the berries afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it sort of becomes a whole. Yeah, the berries. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, like the tea culture and the coffee culture I love, I love uh, mm. um, some weird beverages that you can get here. Like ordinary bubble tea is always an experience. Oh, bubble tea, yeah, that's a big thing in Asia. <laughs> Getting really popular in London now as well. Yeah, yeah, but I mean here, the thing that you can add to your tea is insane. Yeah, um, red beans, all kinds of beans. All kinds of beans, <laughs> like different glutinous bubbles. Yeah. Different flavors and things. Yeah, and they're quite ubiquitous everywhere. Every corner has got those bubble tea shops. Yeah, and then you have yeah. like fruits and all kinds of things yeah. that you can add to it. Yeah. It's not my thing really, but it's a bit too sweet for me. I don't like that kind of milk tea. Well, I found that um, you can order less sugar. Mm. So it helps if you can say, you know, like you know, either less sugar or no sugar. Mm -hmm. So that, that helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no. milk tea is just not for me. <laughs> I prefer the, you know, they call it red tea actually, mm. yeah, I call it black tea. Yeah. Just black tea, no sugar, a bit bitter, that's good for me. Yeah, well I'm the same with my coffee, you don't add sugar to my coffee. No. <laughs> Ice, I don't know, it feels less, less sweet than the, the, the hot one. I've got sugar tea if you want. No, 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 I don't like sugar. Mm. Cool. Mm. Alright, so, um, I, I can guess uh, then you enjoy your life in Shanghai. Right? I enjoy my life in Shanghai. Yeah. 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 So would you um, do you have any tips for people who maybe want to come to China, or just in, something to add? Well, like okay, being South African and there being a lot of South Africans here, one of the things that was reassuring to me is you find your your WeChat group mm -hmm. um, of your of your own people. There's always a group, you've got Americans and Brits and so forth, everyone has their WeChat group mm -hmm. uh, to be added onto it. That if you do need your your comfort of your own people because you're far from your family and your friends um, to get into social action, interaction with your own kind um, every once in a while helps ground you, especially because we couldn't travel with COVID. Yeah. Um, you couldn't just go home for a visit, so to be able to surround yourself with the familiar mm -hmm. is a very reassuring thing. So if you do travel, find your group. Um, it's nice to have a safety net. Mm -hmm. um, they have nice socials and so, so, and if you need to ask questions, people have been places and so forth. There's always great advice out there. Mm -hmm. um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Um, it's the only way you learn. Yeah, everyone knew you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, WeChat is going to be a big part of their life in WeChat's China. WeChat's a big part of your life. You can't it's, go it's, without it's WeChat. It's not like in the West, you know, some people don't have Facebook anymore. Yeah. Like, we have Facebook now. No, WeChat is like, everyone has WeChat. Everyone has WeChat. Also, um, you use your phone for everything. Mm -hmm. Your entire life is on your phone. You don't carry a wallet or anything because everything is on your phone. Yeah. I've gotten so far that I've had my house key on my phone because that's the one thing I need to take with me. Yeah, so if you lose that, you'll be in trouble. Yeah, yeah, deep trouble. Deep, deep trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, luckily, with most phones, luckily you have a translate function, so if you cannot speak the language, you can at least type something in and ask people. Yeah. Um, I've done that so often. Yeah, um, technology-wise, language is not a barrier. Yeah. Just yeah. like when you're face-to-face. -face. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like, you know, like, went walking and you can get lost and you have to find your way back to somewhere familiar and like, stop someone on the street and go, please help! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I must say, I found that the people in Shanghai are very friendly mm -hmm. and approachable. I've had one or two with it that hasn't been the case, but that out of the uh, hundreds of interactions I've had, they're all um, patient, very patient people. <laughs> yeah, patient, yeah, yeah, and they love, uh, you know, you're gonna get bonus help from them. You can tell them you love Shanghai, you love China. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're quite yeah. nationalistic, but I mean, yeah, you're not gonna be lying. Yeah, no, Shanghai is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I really recommend it as a, as a place to visit. Mm -hmm. yeah. To visit and to live is probably the easiest to settle into if you come to China. Yeah. 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 The other ones, Wang Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people go there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, fantastic. it was really nice talking to you, Darlene. Thank you, man. It was yeah. fantastic to chat with you as well. Yes, uh, very easy to talk to you. And uh, okay. if you have any questions for Darlene or I, please put them in the comments below. Good. Great.